a trip to Disney World can be confusing, overwhelming, and expensive. So how can you make the most of your time when you're here? Well, by watching this video, for starters. Today, I'm gonna give you the ultimate must-have tips when visiting Epcot. Let's go. We here at All Ears are Disney experts, and it's my goal to help make you a Disney expert too. Today, I'm giving you the quintessential list of tips for a day in Disney's Epcot. All of these tips are great. Everything I'm about to give you, be ready. But some of these tips are really random, and they're not gonna make sense when I first say them, but then when you use them when you're here at Epcot, you will thank me later. It will make your Epcot day so much better, and you're gonna become a Disney expert. So, you ready? Let's go. All right, we're starting off this tip video pretty strong in the rides category. And my first tip for you, for Epcot specifically, is on your Epcot day, you do have to get up at 7 a.m. Not to get ready for the parks, not to leave for the parks, but you need to get up at 7 a.m. to join the Guardians of the Galaxy virtual queue. Guardians of the Galaxy is an amazing roller coaster here in Epcot, themed to the Marvel Guardians of the Galaxy. It's an awesome roller coaster. It's a very popular, very new ride here in Disney World, and there is currently no regular standby line for this attraction. There's only a virtual queue and an individual lightning lane. Now, in this video, I won't be talking much about Genie Plus, so if you're confused at all by Genie Plus, don't know how it works, please go check out all of our other videos on the channel specifically talking about Genie Plus. So on the morning of your Epcot day, you are going to want to get up before 7 a.m., just for a few minutes before 7, so that you can join that virtual queue right at 7 a.m. This is the only free way that you can ride this very popular attraction in Disney World. Make sure everyone in your party is connected on the My Disney Experience app. You will confirm your party and select to join the virtual queue right at 7 a.m. Now, on the off chance that you sleep in, you don't get the virtual queue, it's not super crowded anymore. You probably have a good chance of getting it at 7 a.m., but just in case you don't, my next tip goes along with that, and that tip is that it's actually a lot easier to get into the 1 p.m. drop for Guardians of the Galaxy. So if for some reason you don't get into the virtual queue at 7 a.m., maybe you don't even try for it, at 1 p.m., if you are inside Epcot, you can sign up for the second virtual queue drop at 1 p.m. The 1 p.m. drop works the same way. You do it on the My Disney Experience app if there's just less people who try at 1 p.m. Plus, for the 1 p.m. drop, you have to physically be in Epcot, whereas at 7 a.m., you don't. You can be nice tucked into your resort bed. You don't have to be in Epcot. Also, I will say Guardians is pretty lenient when it comes to virtual queues and lightning lanes because, you know, you of course want to make it within the one hour window that you receive for coming back to ride this ride. Sometimes if you're late, Guardians is more lenient, they will still let you through. However, that is not the case with every single virtual queue in Disney World, specifically Tron and Magic Kingdom. For Tron, if you have your virtual queue and you miss the time for you to go, they will not let you in. So this tip doesn't work everywhere, it only works for Guardians. So it's okay to be late to Guardians, but it's not okay to be late to Tron. Now, this next tip you might think is a little controversial, a little crazy even, but my next tip is that you can skip rope drop it in this park. What? Yes, you can. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the term, rope drop just means the beginning of a park day in Disney World. A lot of times in other parks, in Magic Kingdom and Hollywood Studios, you can really maximize your park day by utilizing that beginning of the day and hopping in lines for rides that will get significantly longer waits throughout the day. So we encourage rope drop all the time if you're trying to do everything in a park in one day. However, Epcot is a little different. So Epcot's more casual in regards to a crazy full theme park day. And there's a really big tip that I will give you later on in this video that explains this more in depth. But for the most part, all the ride wait times here in Epcot go down towards the midday. So it's a little opposite from every other park but you don't have to get here in rope drop. So honestly, take your Epcot day as your moment to relax, maybe sleep in a little bit. Um, don't feel like you have to get up at the crack of dawn to get over here and start your day. For example, the World Showcase really doesn't even open until 11. So half of the park isn't open until lunchtime. So use this to your advantage, sleep in, maybe have a resort morning, go have a table service reservation, something like that. Just know you don't have to go crazy and you don't actually need to rope drop Epcot. Next up, of course, I'm going to tell you one of the tips for Epcot is to experience the newest attraction here in this park, and that is Journey of Water inspired by Moana. This is a walkthrough attraction teaching you all about the water cycle, and that sounds not super fun, but I promise you this is one of my new favorite things in Epcot. It is a very fun walkthrough attraction. It makes you feel like a little kid again, like you're playing, and it's the perfect 
addition to Epcot, going back to the old school days of edutainment, and I think it is very beautifully well done here in Epcot. But my tip for this attraction specifically is, yes, you might want to do this attraction during the day, but I'm gonna tell you to do it at night. It is very, very beautiful. Honestly, do it twice. Do it in the morning during the daytime and do it again at night because it's just so beautiful, all lit up with Spaceship Earth in the background, and it's honestly gonna be less crowded at night. So do Journey of Water, and I would tell you to do it at night. Now the seas is where you will be let off after you get off of the Finding Nemo attraction. However, even if you don't ride that attraction, you can come in to the seas to come check it out. I highly encourage you to do so. It is really awesome in here. It's a huge aquarium. It's actually the second largest aquarium in America after the aquarium in Georgia. But there are so many great animals to look at in here. They've got fun facts. They've got very knowledgeable cast members. There's even a show with Crush, which I also recommend you do because that's super fun. But there's two levels of aquarium in here and honestly it's just a great place to let your kiddos run around for a little bit it's indoors in the ac you don't have to worry about sunburns or getting hot outside just take a moment look around learn something new find a new animal fun fact and you know what it's underrated i'll say it next up for all of my soren lovers this tip is for you if you want the best seat for that ride according to a lot of disney fans it's b1 According to many Disney fans, B1 is the best seat on the attraction Soarin' Around the World. This is going to give you the best view of the entire attraction. You are smack dab in the middle of the attraction, both from right to left and up and down. You're exactly in the middle. You're not going to see any bent Eiffel Towers or anything like that. So you can always ask a cast member to see if it's possible to sit you in B1. They will, of course, accommodate to the best of their abilities. Um, sometimes if you do ask, you might have to wait a couple extra minutes just so that they can get you on the next round um, and put you right where you want to be. So always, just always in general, be nice to cast members. Ask them very nicely. They will do what they can, but it's never guaranteed. But if you do want a perfect view on Soarin' Around the World, be one. Now this next tip is one of those random ones that I told you about that you're gonna love in the end. Uh, but it's about where the best bathrooms are in Epcot because that is very important, especially in dire emergencies. So these are the best bathrooms in Epcot. There are quite a few bathrooms in Epcot that the All Ears cast team loves. Specifically, there are the bathrooms behind Journey into Imagination with Figment. If you go on the right side of the building around to the back, there's some pretty quiet bathrooms back there. We also love the bathrooms in Norway. Those seem to be pretty less crowded. Bathrooms in America are also great back in the back towards the right of the pavilion. And lastly, in the Odyssey building, those are usually not as crowded as well. Now, of course, a big appeal of Epcot in general is all the food and drink, and there's so many options. How do you know what to choose from? It can be very overwhelming. And honestly, I'll tell you, there's so many options, not everything is gonna be great. So how do you know what to pick? How do you know what you should spend your money on? Every single food item at Disney World, we review it, we give you our honest opinion. Please use this as a resource. Please watch our videos, watch our restaurant reviews, read articles on the website. We do it all for you to make sure that you get the most out of your Disney vacation. Specifically when it comes to Epcot, we do have a video up on our channel already where Quincy talks about the best things that she ate in Epcot. So I highly encourage you to go watch that video. And if there's any festivals coming out, watch those videos as well. We're always here on an opening day of a festival to give you reviews of every single food booth. So those are such great materials for you to use for your upcoming vacation. I highly, highly encourage you to go check them out. Another great tip for Epcot specifically, this tip you could use at any Disney World park, but especially for Epcot with all those food booths is to budget with gift cards. This is a great strategy to stick to your budget and not go over budget because you're gonna wanna get to Epcot, you're gonna wanna try all the food booths depending on what festival is happening when you're there. So if you, ahead of time, buy Disney gift cards and pre-fill them and then you'll know how much money you're spending, you won't have to keep track of it, and as soon as your gift card is out for the day, then you're done, no more spending. So that's a great tip if you really want to stay on budget, maybe your budget for this upcoming trip is very tight and you can't go over it, gift cards are a good way to go. We are always at the festivals on the first day, on the opening day, to give you a look at everything you can expect. So before your trip, always go check out our latest Epcot Festival video. Now one of the most popular things to get here in the UK Pavilion is the fish and chips from the Yorkshire County Fish Shop. Now it's very popular, um, sometimes you can get a long line there, but did you know that's not the only place you can get the fish and chips? You can actually get them as well 
at the Rosa Crown Pub. So if you're hanging out in Rosa Crown Pub, if you're getting a drink, having fun, and you need some food in your system while you're probably drinking around the world, uh, you can get the fish and chips over at the pub. Did you know that there is a second secret entrance into Epcot that will help you get on one of the most popular rides in Epcot so much faster? It's called the International Gateway and it's right next to the France Pavilion. The International Gateway is located in the back of Epcot to the right of the France Pavilion. It is a second entrance into Epcot that is normally a lot less crowded than the front of the park. This second entrance is very handy and useful, especially for those Epcot resorts. So if you're staying at the Boardwalk, Swan and Dolphin, or Beach or Yacht Club Resort, this is a great perk to you. You can just walk straight into Epcot and not even have to worry about parking, not having to worry about Ubering to your park. And again, this is also a great resource if you want to rope drop Remy's in the morning. You'll be a lot closer to that attraction than if you are coming in from the front of the park. So if rope dropping Remy's is part of your plan for your Epcot day, use the International Gateway entrance to get in. Now next up, of course, breakfast is the most important meal of the day, but breakfast is actually really hard to find in Epcot. And actually there's only one place in the entire park that serves breakfast, and that is the France Pavilion. So you either eat breakfast in France or not at all. Now you can eat breakfast in France, and I'm about to tell you the best thing to ever eat for breakfast in France. But if you're not trying to get here super early in the morning, you can take this as your resort day. Maybe get a nice breakfast at your resort. Maybe you have a table service reservation somewhere else. You kind of take your time a little bit more leisurely and wait until it's lunchtime to eat in Epcot. Now let's talk about what you should be getting for breakfast here in the France Pavilion. Located in the very back of the France Pavilion is Leal. Back here you can find all sorts of pastries and sandwiches and desserts and snacks and there's so many options. We, as a team, love this quick service. It is one of our favorites. It's our absolute favorite in Epcot for sure, especially when it comes to breakfast. Now sometimes the lines can get pretty long, but for the most part they go by pretty quickly and I cannot recommend enough the Quiche Lorraine. It is my favorite. It's Quincy's favorite. I think it's Emma's favorite too. We absolutely love this quiche. It is so wonderful. Gruyere cheese and ham and egg and it's just beautiful and please try it. Also, it's relatively cheap and it's a pretty big breakfast. You could share it with someone or it would easily fill you up if you're just eating it by yourself. So please do yourself a favor, come get that quiche. Now, I know I just told you that you don't have to rope drop Epcot and that's true, but I get it. Sometimes you want to, you want to spend that whole day in a Disney park. I totally understand that. So if you are gonna rope drop, here is what we recommend you do in Epcot. Number one, either Remy's Ride to Adventure or Frozen Ever After. These both are available as Lightning Lane options. So if you do end up purchasing just the Genie Plus for the day, of course, use those Lightning Lanes. But if you are just gonna rope drop, regular standby line, we encourage you to do Remy's or Frozen. Those are the two that you should definitely rope drop. Next tip I've got for you is to save your souvenir money for Epcot. Yes, I get it. You're going to want to buy the mini ears and Magic Kingdom and all of that. But honestly, set aside just a little bit of money for souvenirs from Epcot. There's unique merch all around the world showcase, some very cool and again, very unique souvenirs that you will not find anywhere else. A lot of very authentic things to each country, which is really cool and fun to bring back home. You've got things like engraved perfume in France. You can buy a bunch of different snacky items like ramen in Japan. You can get swords in the UK pavilion. I'm not kidding, you can buy actual swords. So there's a lot of cool things. Go to the pavilions, check them out, and see if you wanna buy any souvenirs from the World Showcase. Now, the next tip, and this is very important in hitting up all of the rides, all of the shows, all of the characters. This is the key to having the best day ever in Epcot, and that is starting your day and ending your day in the World Showcase. Later on in this video, I will talk about more in depth how this strategy works. It's Quincy's infamous Morocco boat trick. But basically the way to do Epcot correctly is to start your day in World Showcase, maybe with Remy's Ride to Adventure in France or with Frozen Ever After in Norway. Um, but basically starting your day with a couple rides in World Showcase, then going to the front of the park during the midday, hitting up all of those rides in World Discovery, World Nature, those areas, and then ending your day again in the World Showcase. This tip actually helps you avoid crowds all day long. If you don't listen to anything else during this video, listen to this tip, and this is Quincy's infamous Morocco boat tip. So this tip really is all about avoiding crowds all day long in Epcot. It's crazy that it works this way, but it does. So here's what you gotta do. 
first, when you first get into Epcot in the morning, if you're coming from the front of the park, you've just walked under Spaceship Earth and you've made it to World Showcase, you are going to hop on a boat and boat all the way back to Morocco in the World Showcase. Now, sometimes the boats may not be running right at the beginning of park opening. Just walk over there, check it out. More than likely they are, but you never know. Boats could be running a little late one day. Once you boat over to Morocco, you are going to start walking away from France. So this tip really helps you avoid crowds because you are walking away from people who are rope dropping Remy's. You are walking the opposite of people who start in Mexico and you're ahead of the people who start in Canada. So really all day long, you are avoiding the crowds. Quincy and I tried to do this on our recent best day ever in Epcot. Um, it did not work out completely for us because the boats weren't running but we still did this same idea, just walking. So when we first got here, we started, we got breakfast in France and then we started in Mexico and worked our way through this tip. So I promise it really truly does work. You avoid crowds all day long. It just, it works out perfectly. So please do the Morocco boat trip. Now this tip, I'm gonna reiterate again in just a few minutes, but tip for you, go into the pavilions. There's so much to do and see in every single one of them. They might not all have a ride per se, but there are so many um, exhibits, there's so much entertainment, um, there's so many things to do and look at that you're gonna miss if you don't walk into these pavilions, specifically some of the best entertainment in Epcot. But instead of just talking about my favorite um, entertainment in Epcot, why don't I show you? So let's head inside the American Pavilion. Inside the American Pavilion, you will find the amazing group of acapella singers called the Voices of Liberty. They are some of my favorite entertainment in all of Epcot. I personally think that they're the best. They're just, I can't explain how talented they are and how amazing they are. Honestly, I cannot spend a day in Epcot without seeing the Voices of Liberty at least once. If any of you ever watch any of our videos, I'm your biggest fan. But there's somebody else here in Epcot today, and I want to go find her and put her on the spot. Oh my goodness, look who it is! It's Cassie I from Disney you. Food Vlog. I know, I tracked you too. I was sitting in there watching you walk closer to me. I like to put all of my Allier's friends on Find My Friends, and I look at them in the parks like they're my Sims. Oh, that's so fun. That's so fun. Listen, nobody has a better time in Epcot than Fry. Oh, that's true. She, She's all about the peaceful vibes. Every time I track her, living with the land. <laughs> Voices of Liberty. Yeah, I know all the best spots. Um, okay, throwing you on the spot. This video that I'm doing is all about Epcot tips. It is the ultimate list of Epcot tips. So what's your number one Epcot tip? Just in general, doesn't matter. I really, really advise you to get some caramel popcorn. Oh! And listen, if you have a friend who you track and you see she's in Germany, <laughs> and you text her to get some popcorn and she texts you back, no, I already left. Delete that friend from your contacts. <laughs> Oops. But actually, she but holds, actually, Cassie holds scrudges, just so you know. I do, but mobile order popcorn in Germany, it's so good if you like caramel. They have a bunch of really good, a bunch of really good treats and like everyone on our team and their team loves them. You probably won't regret it. Well, well, I'll let you get back to your nice family day here in Epcot. It's starting to rain, and I don't have any rain gear. What's new? And something super special that happens here in Epcot, over to the left side of the American Pavilion and the World Showcase, they have what is called a character palooza. And it's never listed on the My Disney Experience app. It is a surprise. It's something that you run into but a lot of our Disney character friends who um, are new, if you understand what I mean, wink, wink. They're usually not walking around. It's mainly just a quick little meet and greet photo situation with a couple of character attendants. So if you ever see people starting to gather over here and you see some rare characters, please go say hi because these are oftentimes very rare characters that you will not meet anywhere else in Disney World. And it's just a fun little surprise. So keep your eye out for characters in America. When it comes to Epcot festivals, there's a lot of performances and things that happen in the American Gardens Theater, but if you want a guaranteed seat for your favorite 
celebrities, favorite candlelight processional narrator, favorite performances, you can do a Regal Eagle dining package. There are other dining packages when it comes to festival performances. However, the Regal Eagle dining package is the easiest to snag day of. So if you didn't check the calendar, you're not sure who's going to be here on a festival performance day and you get here and you say, oh my goodness, it's John Stamos who will be here tonight, might I add. If you see someone you want to come see, walk to Regal Eagle first thing in the morning, check their availability, go right when it opens to see if you can snag a dining package because they are as cheap as $35 per person. That will get you an appetizer, an entree, and a drink, and it gets you guaranteed close seating for the performance. So honestly, it's a great deal, especially if there's a popular celebrity that you want to see. Next tip is for all my Dole Whip lovers out there. Did you know you can get Dole Whip here in Epcot and some pretty unique flavors of Dole Whip at that? Here in the Africa section of the World Showcase at the Refreshment Outpost, you can get Dole Whip. Right now on the menu, it's Dole Whip Raspberry, and sometimes, depending on different festivals, they'll have different flavors like lime or coconut or regular Dole Whip. So just check the menu, see what's here when you're here, but you can get Dole Whip in Epcot. Another tip for you, there are some secret tables in some of the pavilions. So this is one of our team's biggest kept secrets, so you're welcome for revealing this to you. But there's a lot of tables in some of the pavilions that are kind of tucked away and are normally not ever crowded. So if you need a spot to sit down, take a break, you can do that throughout the World Showcase. Specifically, there are some tables in France right before you walk to the back of the pavilion for Remy's Ride to Adventure. There are a few tables out there. That's where we like to sit and eat our breakfast usually. There are also some secret tables in the back of the Norway Pavilion behind the Kringla Bakery and those are covered so that's a really good spot as well. So again, walk into the pavilions, check it out because you never know what you might find, like seating. Now my next tip for this video is pretty simple and that's just frankly check the calendar. Um, there are four different festivals here all year round so if you're looking to come during a festival time be sure to check the calendar because more than likely you will be here during a festival but given the off chance that you come on a one to two week period in between festivals you would be really disappointed to get to Epcot and then see that all of the food booths are closed. So just in general check the calendar make sure you're coming on a festival day if you want that, or if you don't want the big festival crowds, find that one to two week period in between food and wine and festival of the holidays and come then. Shout out to all my character lovers out there. I am one of them. I love meeting the characters all around Disney World, especially here in Epcot, there's quite a few, and specifically the princesses. Now, if you're trying to meet a whole bunch of characters in one day, especially all those different princesses, you're gonna wanna meet them earlier in the day because they're not out all day. So for example, Belle in France, um, Aurora in France, Snow White in Germany. Um, sometimes Ariel can be out and about on her legs, um, usually International Gateway, but that's rare. But basically what I'm trying to say is all the princesses are out earlier in the day and then they close. So with the exception of Anna and Elsa with their designated meet and greet inside in the Norway Pavilion, all the other princesses who are outside, they don't meet all day. So if that's a key part of your Epcot day, if you've got a little one in your family who wants to meet all the princesses, just make that a priority because it's a lot harder to meet all the princesses in one day if you don't pay attention to the wait times. If you want to see how I tried to meet all of the princesses in one day, you can check out my character challenge already up on the channel. I started my day here in Epcot and basically went kind of in a circle around World Showcase to meet all of the princesses in the morning. So for more character tips, be sure and watch that video. Now this one I say all the time in any sort of Epcot video. And my next tip is that for me, I have always considered it a great perk to ride single rider for Test Track. Test Track is a very popular attraction here in Epcot and it's actually the fastest attraction in Disney World. Now the trick here to get on Test Track very quickly because it is popular right now, the standby wait is 60 minutes, but there is a single rider line here at this attraction. There are multiple single rider lines all across Disney World. Some of them are great, some of them are not. I'm looking at you, Rock and Roller Coaster. But in my experience, every time I have hopped into the single rider line for Test Track, I wait less than 10 minutes no matter what the standby wait time is. So if you are okay with riding by yourself, if you are okay with splitting up your party, then absolutely hop in the single rider line for Test Track. Now this next tip isn't technically Disney entertainment, 
but I find it entertaining and I think you will as well. And so my next tip is to come to Club Cool and trick your family into drinking Beverly. Club Cool is a spot here in Epcot. Um, it's basically a Coca-Cola store with lots of merch and different Coke products. But over here you can actually sample different Coke flavors from around the world and it's completely free. So you can come in here, have some fun with your family and try some drinks from around the world that you might never have another chance to drink them anywhere else because I mean you may not be able to travel all the way to Germany but you can try Germany's favorite soda. The Italy Coke which is called Beverly um, isn't the favorite among many people. It's very bitter so a lot of people don't love it. Some people do which I think those people I don't know how they do it but come over here check out all the different flavors. Um, I think Quincy likes Russia, but also Korea. I like Madagascar. So it's very fun to come and try all the different flavors. Cheers. I love Madagascar. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe and now go watch my tips video for Hollywood Studios. I'll see you there.